is the key for such policies as accepting many Syrian refugees. Kona also met President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. They agreed to boost bilateral economic ties, including trade. Turkey strongly protests U.S. President Donald Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Kono conveyed to Erdogan Japan's position that a solution through negotiations is important. The Indian Navy plans to build up its maritime capabilities in the face of China's increasing activities in the Indian Ocean. The Navy unveiled the plan aimed at strengthening surveillance in key areas of sea lanes in the Indian Ocean. The move follows the commissioning earlier this month of a new submarine that has advanced stealth capabilities. Aircraft carriers from the current 1 to 2 and that of the new stealth submarine to 6 by 2020. It also plans to build six nuclear-powered submarines within the same time frame with support from France. Chinese submarines are believed to be active in the Indian Ocean for what China claims are anti-piracy operations. Fourteen Chinese naval ships appeared on the ocean while troops had faced us for more than two months since June on the border between China and India. Tens tensions rose after China began road construction in the area. The free and open Indo-Pacific strategy advocated by Japan and the United States requires close cooperation with India. India's chief of the naval staff, Sunil Lamba, told reporters that he understands the role that other countries expect the Indian Navy to play. A human rights monitoring group says more than 33,000 people were killed in the Syrian civil war this year and that one-third of them were civilians. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights released the results of its count of fatalities in the war on Thursday. The group says about 10,500 civilians were killed, including children. It says roughly 1,800 of them were killed by Islamic State militants and that some 5,500 lost their lives in attacks by President Bashar al-Assad's government forces, Russian troops and other parties. The group says around 2,400 civilians were killed in airstrikes by the U.S.-led international coalition. It adds the tally of those killed in the war since turmoil began in 2011 has exceeded 340,000. The observatory says a humanitarian crisis is still continuing as some towns have no access to supplies of food or medicine due to a siege by government forces. The group is urging the international community to do more to resolve the situation. You're listening to NHK World Radio Japan in Tokyo. Domestic flights, bullet trains and highway traffic from Tokyo remain crowded as the number of travelers heading to their hometowns or resorts for the New Year holiday period peaked on Friday. Train operators say the occupancy rates for non-reserved seats exceeded 100% on many Shinkansen bullet train services. They say reserved seats are fully booked on many of the trains on Saturday, with high occupancy rates also expected for non-reserved seats. Airline officials say domestic flights from Tokyo have been almost fully booked throughout the day on Friday, and the situation is expected to continue on Saturday. Highway congestion also continues. Operators say heavy traffic will persist into Friday night at some locations. They also expect bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic for 30 kilometers on Tomei Expressway and 20 kilometers on Kangaitsu Expressway on Saturday morning. Officials expect return traffic to peak on Tuesday for flights and highways and Wednesday for the bullet train services. Subculture fans have flocked to a major event in Tokyo for exhibiting and selling self-published work by manga and anime fans. The comic market kicked off in Quarter Ward on Friday and will run until Sunday. About 11,000 groups are selling their works inspired by popular manga and anime films at the biannual event. Last year's three-day event attracted some 550,000 visitors. 
Some exhibitors pitch their work by dressing up as the characters they've created. Businesses and organizations are also take, taking part. As a booth of a speedboat race course operator in Tokyo, a female boat racer posing as an image character signed autographs for buyers. Visitors also enjoyed cosplaying outdoors, trying on costumes of different anime characters. Finally, let's take another look at the top story at this hour. The Secretary General of Japan's governing Liberal Democratic Party has requested that Chinese President Xi Jinping visit Japan next year. And that was the news from NHK World Radio Japan in Tokyo. I'm Yoshio Gasawara. And I'm Risa Shimizu. You can access the latest English news on our website at nhk.jp slash rj. Please stay tuned. Welcome to Plug in Japan. I'm Michael Reese. And I'm Sarah MacDonald. Today's Plug in Japan is the third installment in a three part series titled News Highlights 2017. This year we witnessed the accomplishments of many people who have drawn our attention since their teen years. Let's take a look at this year's news on sports and society. On January 27th, Kisei no Sato, the new sumo wrestling champion, or Yokozuna, performed a ring-entering ritual at the Meiji Jingu Shrine in Tokyo. Kisei no Sato was promoted to the 72nd Yokozuna after winning his first tournament in January 2017. He was Japan's first homegrown Yokozuna in 19 years since Waka no Hana. Sumo fans have always had high expectations of Kisino Sato since he entered the second judo division in 2004 at 17 years old. The area around Meiji Jingu was packed with some 18,000 fans who wanted to see Kisino Sato's first ring entering ceremony. <laughs> It was great. I hope you'll be a strong Yokozuna. With the arrival of Kisino Sato, the tournament had four Yokozunas, including three Mongolians, Hakuho, Haruma Fuji, and Kaguryu. The year started off full of expectations. <laughs> We also saw a shogi boom break out this year. In June, an association of shogi players in Tokyo started selling clear file folders with a shogi player printed on them. All 1,000 sold out in just a day. This stunned an association employee. This is the first time that shogi goods have sold out in one day. The shogi boom was sparked by 15-year-old player Sota Fuji, who holds a fourth dan. Since becoming Japan's youngest professional shogi player at a record young age of 14 years and two months, he had remained unbeaten in official games. <laughs> On June 26th, he won the 29th game in a row, equaling a record of consecutive wins for the first time in 30 years. 29 straight wins was chosen for a special prize in Japan's Keywords of the Year contest. Fuji commented. <laughs> Breaking the record made me feel special and gave me joy. I will be improving my shogi skills even further to gain big titles. A young athlete in track and field is also gaining people's attention. Yoshige Kiryu of the men's 100 meter race has been in the spotlight since he was a teenager. And recently, at 21 years old, he accomplished an impressive feat. When he was in his third year of high school, he marked a time of 10.01 seconds, which was the second fastest in Japan's history. Ever since, he had been expected to break his record with a time under 10 seconds. The historic moment came in September, when he ran at Fukushi, a city located in central Japan on the Sea of Japan coast. 
外国連キリング・シジレ君、東洋大学。He marked 9.98 seconds, becoming the first Japanese athlete to run 100 meters in under 10 seconds. Expectations are rising for the Tokyo Olympics in 2020. I think it's the first time to start the race. I think it's the first time to start the race. I think it's the first time to start the race. Now I'm at the starting line for world competition. I want to prove myself as a world class finalist. Winning a medal is a goal for athletes like Kiryu who aim to compete in the Tokyo Olympics. Medals that will be used in the 2020 Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games will be made out of recycled metal collected from used cell phones and digital cameras. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government set up a special metal collection box in February to ask for cooperation. <laughs> To create the 5,000 or so medals needed for the Tokyo Games, some 8 tons of metal are needed. The city intends to continue the collection all around the country until the spring of 2019, and there are less than 950 days until the opening of the Tokyo Olympics. On September 3rd, Princess Mako, the eldest daughter of the Akishino Nomiya family, announced her engagement to Kei Komuro, a former classmate at college. 婚約が内定いたしましたことを誠に嬉しく思っております。小室さんは私を温かく。I am very happy to announce that the engagement has been unofficially decided. Mr. Komuro is someone who always encourages me with a warm heart. The wedding ceremony is scheduled for November 4th next year at a hotel in Tokyo. Princess Mako will lose her imperial status when she marries. Japan's Prime Minister says the Imperial House Council reached a consensus on the date for the upcoming abdication of Emperor Akihito. Shinzo Abe says council members... On December 1st, an Imperial House Council was held for the first time in 25 years. The heads of the three branches of government, including Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and the Imperial family members, attended the council to discuss the abdication of the Emperor. As a result, the current emperor will resign on April 30th, 2019, and the crown prince will succeed the throne on the following day, May 1st. This will be the first abdication in about 200 years. The year became an important turning point for the imperial family. A stranded elderly woman has just been saved. From July 5th to the 6th, the northern part of Kyushu was hit by record-breaking heavy rains from Typhoon Nanmadol and seasonal rain fronts. Roads were blocked in Fukuoka and Oita prefectures, and more than 1,100 people became stranded temporarily. The total amount of rain came to over 500 millimeters in heavier regions, exceeding the usual monthly amount in some areas. The death toll stood at 39 as of December 21st. On November 29th, Haru Mafuji, who is one of the four Yokozunas of the Grand Sumo Tournament, retired. He took responsibility for an act of violence against fellow sumo wrestler Takano Iwa at the end of October. <laughs> I did what I was not supposed to do as a Yokozuna. I want to bear the responsibility not to hurt the title of Yokozuna. Expectations were high with Kisei no Sato's promotion to Yokozuna, but the four Yokozuna era took an unfortunate turn with Haruma Fuji's assault and retirement. What you are listening to here is a song called Can You Celebrate by Namiya Amuro. And she has sold two million copies of this single, and that's the most among female singers in Japan. Her popularity became a social phenomenon with girls copying her fashion and her hairstyles. As she commemorated the 25th year since her debut this year, she decided to end her singing career on September 16th next year. 
Let's listen to the words of women who have stepped down and have been symbols of their time. I want to advance with a smile without forgetting what I experienced in my skating life. This is the farewell message of Mao Asada, Japan's leading female figure skater. With her trademark Mao smile and triple axel jump, she had led Japan's figure skating by winning many titles, including a silver medal in the Vancouver Olympics. The heroine of figure skating said goodbye right before the opening of the Pyeongchang Olympic Games. My golf life could not be better. I now understand how fortunate I have been these past 14 years. It has been such a wonderful time for me. This is Ai Miyazato, a 32-year-old female golf player who revealed in May that she would retire at the end of this season. She became a professional when she was still in high school and reached the number one world ranking in 2010. The Japan Golf Association decided to ask her to become a coach for Japan's golf team playing at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. On December 5th, Yoshiharu Habu, a shogi player, won a seven-game match to capture the Ryo title. He was also awarded the title of lifetime Ryo, as he's won the championship seven times. Players who have won a tournament under the same title for a certain number of times qualify for a lifelong title. Habu had gained six out of the seven existing lifelong titles, excluding the Ryo title, but by getting the Ryo title, he's now achieved seven lifelong crowns, and that's for the first time in history. It has been 32 years since he made his debut in 1985 as the third junior high school professional shogi player. For Habu, this was a spectacular achievement. He said this may have been his last chance to win the title, considering his age. When asked about his future aspirations, he said, If I'm asked how much I understand shogi, fundamentally I would say that I still know nothing. I don't know if I can be stronger in the future, but I want to take the next step by keeping the right attitude and mindset. He has gained 99 titles overall. Aiming to win his 100th title next year, the challenges continue for this renowned shogi player. That was the last installment of News Highlights 2017, and we looked back on this year's major events related to sports and society. We hope you enjoyed today's Plug in Japan. We are always pleased to receive your comments and suggestions. For regular mail, please address your letters to Plug in Japan English Service, NHK Tokyo 150-8001 Japan. That's Plug in Japan English Service, NHK Tokyo 150-8001 Japan. You can send in your messages from our website as well. Please visit our website at nhk.jp slash rj and click on Contact Us. Thank you for tuning in and please join us again. From our studios at NHK in Tokyo, I'm Michael Lewis. And I'm Sarah McDonald.
You're listening to NHK World Radio Japan Broadcasting from Tokyo. Here's a frequency notice. English language programs are broadcast five times a day. At five hours UTC on 6.155 MHz and 9.770 MHz. At 11 hours on 11.825. At 14 hours. On 11.925 and 9.560. At 18 hours on 11.800. And at 19.30 hours on 9.625 and 9.485. We are always pleased to receive your comments and suggestions via mail or through our website at nhk.jp slash rj. В эфире Радио Японии Всемирной службы NHK World. Мы предлагаем свое вещание на русском языке на коротких и средних волнах через спутник и в интернете. Подробно о времени и частотах нашего вещания вы можете узнать на веб-сайте nhk.jp. Приглашаем послушать наши программы.